Hello everybody and welcome to Honor Thy Podcast. This is the weekly DC TV Arrowverse podcast where we discuss everything Arrowverse. I'm your host, Declan McKinney. You may know me as DC TV Talk. And with me as always is my co-host, Dan McCants, otherwise known as Mule Kick Media. Hey, if I sound sleepy during this, it's because we're recording this way later than usual. And blame Declan because he didn't buy enough chicken wings. For once it was my fault. <laughs> For once it was actually my fault. Can you confirm I if you... failed this podcast... Can you confirm though that you ate chicken wings? Because if you did, it's okay. You didn't fail the podcast. Well, anyone who knows me knows that I'm not a liar, and unfortunately, I did not have chicken wings. Oh man, this is, you let everyone down now. You're no longer. You are no thing. longer the Flash. You are well, no longer the Flash. I was we never are. the Flash, though. We are. We are. <laughs> this doesn't oh, change anything. This doesn't. This doesn't change anything, Hoss. <laughs> We've actually got. We can actually talk about Hoss a little bit later. Oh, get in, get in. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a jam-packed episode this week. <laughs> and also, yeah, we apologise for not doing an episode last week. But basically, Dan had some real life stuff going on with his uni stuff, and I. Uh, you had I math problems. Speak. <laughs> <laughs> I, I physically couldn't. Talk, he could. So. He couldn't speak yet. He still managed to make videos during that week. <laughs> it was painful. I was full on crying my eyes out while I, doing it. I bet in between those takes, you were just there with like. Just I having a first was, aid kit like, in your like two minute oh break <laughs> in between each take because like, oh. my eyes were watering. I had to like move my mouth. Oh my! Much. Anyway, <laughs> uh, we've actually got loads of news this week, and then we're going to continue our series of the top five episodes, and we're going to do our top five episodes for the Flash season four. We continue to just do five just for continuity and just to make it kind of easier. So. Yeah, and it makes it harder to rank them as well because if I guess if it's a ten, it, I don't know. It just feels like there's it's a bit too much. To yeah. Season. <laughs> but basically half the season it's it's more challenging if you put it down to five especially for like the flash and like we had before and supergirl because i think they're generally harder to like put together since they weren't as good as seasons i'm gonna find legend particularly hard to rank that's yeah but, but like for the for the right reasons though <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> so we'll jump into the news we've got a brand new uh super season trailer now they released one last night and then today they've released an extended version um we'll just talk about the extended one because you know um i mean the cw they release these super season trailers like every year and they release like a few of them normally i'm not a big fan of them i always just kind of think they're a bit meh but this one is actually really good yeah this was that this one was really good because it, it was weird because i know you talked about this as well like they released like the really small one and everyone's making videos for it and then literally almost the same day as yeah, soon as everyone's got them out it's like oh we'll just drop the the actual extended trailer yeah because i made my video yesterday and it's just i uploaded it at like i don't know nine or whatever it was and then like i think it was like four hours later they released the extended one and now <laughs> i mean i've got my video for the extended one rendering right now is recording this see this is this is why you do a mean when you see the like the small one you just think to yeah, yourself, you it's, it's, it's the CW. <laughs> just wait for the extended yeah. one. Yeah. I don't know why they didn't just release the I know. extended one in the first place. It, what, it what's do, the point? It, it does feel stupid. Because, I mean, both trailers are good. But it's like, well, if you've got one that's like got all this footage and you're going to release it like so soon after, what's the point of releasing that one beforehand? Like, I yeah. don't know. It's just... I mean, the first one was good. But, like, the extended one has got some really cool stuff in it. Yeah, um, really good. So, I think one thing we can just sort of talk about is uh, we, there's actually one of a shot of felicity she's actually visiting oliver in prison so i mean we didn't really think she was going to visit oliver um i guess we kind of assumed that she was in witness protection she was going to be out of star city but yeah i guess not um she's got a pink hair like we saw in the set photos she's got a bruised up face after getting a whipping from ricardo ts hopefully hopefully he's beat it to a pulp that'll make me happy i'm not promoting a beat in the pro yes yes Please, if, See, this, if this is what this is what Beth Schwartz is on about when she says <laughs> this is what she means she by dark yeah. <laughs> yeah, she yeah. wants to push the censors. This is what she means. <laughs> She's gonna kill children on screen. I'm fine with this as long as it's Willy. <laughs> oh, I'm a hundred percent fine with it. <laughs> oh, God. So that's cool. And then, obviously, I did promise you just a few minutes ago we'll talk about Hoss. Um, we've got a scene that is potentially hinting at what Renee is up to uh, yeah. this season. Yeah. He looks to be some training some kids yeah. in uh, like self defense or something martial arts get in 
I'm yes. all, I'm actually really down for this. I think yeah. that's really cool. I'm actually yeah, because especially like with the story Rene was on last season, to like see him become like a mentor of sorts. Like, I'm a, I don't yeah. know why. I'm just really happy for it. Yeah, I we're not. Really cool. I mean, we're not saying this because like one of his most <laughs> infamous quotes is our tagline, but it, it is generally an in- intriguing story. <laughs> <laughs> because we just love Rene. <laughs> though, though to be fair, if he's at Heroes of Villains London next year, we are definitely having a photo with him. The two of us. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, normally we get our photos separately, but we will have to get one together for that one. Yeah, got to get some <laughs> shameless promotion for the podcast. That's going to be our thumbnail. Gonna, I'm, I will, I will make a banner that says "This doesn't change anything, Hoss." I'll, ha- I'll get him to hold it up, <laughs> and then we'll have a photo, and that'll be like that's going to be the new logo. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I really like this. Um, I think one of the kids there is his daughter Zoe, so that's a part of it. And also, I'm looking at the shot right now. I don't know if you noticed this, but Dinah's actually in the background there. Yeah. Um, she stood in the background. Is this hinting at a Renee and Dinah relationship? Oh, like, I remember when, wasn't it like last season when they announced that, like, Dinah was going to have a new love interest? Then we were all like, oh, it's her and Renee. And then it turned out to be Vince. I think it's still possible. I, th- I, th- I think it could be them. I generally I think. think... It could be. Because they have said that Diana's is going to get a new love address yeah. in season seven, it'll yeah. cause conflict. Yeah, I mean, when you think about it, they're both vigilantes. Both of their previous exes are dead. It makes sense. It's the CW. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I honestly, I mean, I thought it would have happened last season, but yeah, yeah I, I think it is entirely possible. Yeah, because there's a lot of Renee and Diana together in the trailer. Yeah, and they were always quite a good pair anyway, mm. even when they were on Team Arrow. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's possible. Um, yeah. I think I, it's the only one at this point that I can actually see happening, like because of what maybe the relationship they've built up towards hand. Like, otherwise, if it choose anything else, it's like I don't know, it just come out of the blue to me. So it's probably the one that I could see happening. Hashtag Wild Canary. Um, <laughs> would you? I have a quick question, obviously, because obviously you are a massive Lorifer shipper. I unclear. I definitely am. Would you? How would you react? I mean, obviously, this would never happen given Oliver and Felicity. But fuck them. Oliver and Dinah. <laughs> I know it would never happen uh, now, just because of and also because obviously them look, two are not exactly on best terms. Look, all I'm saying is, but like back Di- in season five, Di- I think they were maybe hinting at it. Dinah's Di- 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 not Laurel though, so I, I, I could say yes and no because while it's a black canary, it's not the black canary. No, I wanted Dinah and Diggle, but then again, exactly. I do- <laughs> But then again, I do love Lila. <laughs> Lila needs to be a series regular. See, you you just started to promote all these couples to break up now. You're just like, oh, I wanted Diner and Diggle to get yeah, together. Barry and Iris break the, up. Barry and Caitlin, the double, let's go. I wanted the double Ds together. That's what you were like. <laughs> oh, yeah. Power couple, man. Uh, <laughs> we, we need to get on. Um, <laughs> so there are other things in this trailer as well, like uh, Melissa Benoist is in the trailer, so she's on set now. Where, hey? Yay. Um, she actually filmed scenes. <laughs> Um, also, Alex is there. We get to see her in a new haircut and sort of being the director of the DEO, which is cool. I'm actually quite excited about Alex next season. We'll see what sort of what they do with her. Um, and then the Flash has got some cool stuff in the trailer. We get to see Cicada. Um, or Cicada. Or Cicada. I think it is Cicada. I have no idea um, anymore. He's got that lightning bolt dagger. Nice. That looks really cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Because I, I, I was worried because I thought like, especially with these like lightning bolt daggers, like they, they come off a bit awkward, but. From the way it looks in the trailer, it looks really cool. Like, doesn't look yeah, like goofy I'm or anything. At it now it's got a handle, like it's got a yeah handle that he's using, it, like like a knife, like it's mm. actually like a knife. Oh, so um, I can't wait so that's for that. cool. Um, now, now, <laughs> uh, so we got another new look at the flash suit. Now we did get a look at it in the first trailer, uh, briefly, and didn't look the best in no. that shot um i actually said in my video i really liked it I'm, i completely take that back because <laughs> <laughs> upon reflection it's pretty weak but we've got another one here in star labs and quite frankly it looks terrible <laughs> the it thing is really it's bad. like you know a, a costume is bad when i look at him in the suit and i think to myself i swear that's not grant gustin because he doesn't look like himself in the suit. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't look like him. Like, I don't know, how do you do that? That That is truly a superpower. How do you make Grant Gustin look, look like Grant Gustin? And like, oh god, like the suit just looks horrible. It looks like something that was just like made for five quid by a fan. No offence. Yeah, it looks but very it's like, cool. 
I mean, compared to the season four suit, I thought the season four suit would have been perfectly fine to have up until that final season. But it's just like, you know, it's got no chin strap on it. Just the way that it's like constructed in live action, it just doesn't suit. It just, it comes off cross as like very, I, I don't know, but like, just very cheap looking. And it's weird because like... I was oh, thinking as well, you know the season four suit? Right? Yeah. Barry had that in 2024. Yeah, but he changed the future though, didn't he? Yeah, I know, but I just... Where's this suit coming from? It's, I know. It's, it just it feels weird to me. And it's like, um, well, if he's got the season one suit, why has he got the season one emblem? He should have the season two emblem. But because <laughs> that's in present day, that scene with him in the yeah, season yeah, one suit. Yeah, oh, that was also oh. in the trailer. Yeah, that that's oh. present day. And it's like, uh, why is that not the the yellow lightning bolt on? Oh my god, this is honestly, it's like, it's depressing because yeah. I look at the poster, and the poster for the season five costume, it Looks made good. it look really good. Apart from the chin strap, I, I, I'm hashtag team chin strap, so I'll always say that. But it's like in live action, it's just I really am scared for the amount of memes that are going to be made about Barry's suit. <laughs> I mean, on the arms, it's like dead creased. And yeah, it's too creased. The big problem as well is the neck. It looks really, I mean, I, really I, bad. It's detached, and we yeah. know that, but it just it looks detached like it doesn't look like it's melded properly. It, look, it almost looks as if his neck has been slightly broken or twisted <laughs> yeah because of the actual like way that the suit functions maybe it, maybe it is maybe that's what's happened in the scene and now we're all taking the mick out of it it's just like oh yeah he actually yeah oh. grant gustin broke his neck on set and they're gonna <laughs> make and they're gonna make a joke out of it because they've got to be light-hearted <laughs> yeah he's just gonna full-on tom cruise it like grant gustin's just doing his own stunts and <laughs> carried on he broke his neck and kept fighting oh beautiful yeah Anyway, so that's the trailer. There wasn't really um, much else uh, to talk about. There's like nothing really for Supergirl or Legends. No, um, it was mainly just Flash and Arrow. I know, I guess a bit of Black Lightning at the start. Yeah, Lightning. yeah. It was. It was the first, to be fair. It was actually the first actual season two footage of Black Lightning. Yeah, because so we got because we got none in that supposed season two Comic Con trailer. No, it was actually a five minute clip show. Um, <laughs> it's five minutes long. That trailer was. Oh um, god. But yeah, that's the trailer. Um, but speaking of Black Lightning, we actually got a couple of posters as well this week. Uh, we got the first poster for Black Lightning Season 2. Um, I love that poster. Yeah, I, I, I love it as well. I just love... I'll, it, 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 reminds me, of it. it reminds me very much of like... Um, I don't know how you'd say it, but like a retro poster that you'd see in like yeah. the 80s where you got all like the characters just like put on it around the edge like oh it's it, it really cool i really it do like me of that a film but i can't think what it is yeah um and also it's quite reminiscent of the netflix show dear white people like it's got quite a similar poster yeah to that. um also jefferson has got a bit of a different hairstyle which looks great mm. uh i'm really happy about that um it just looks really cool I, i'm in love with that poster at the moment i just think it looks so so cool um yeah. and you've got tobias whaled on the bottom as well yeah yeah I mean, everyone's sort of talking about Arrow and giving it praise with Ricardo Diaz kind of surviving past season six. But Tobias Whale, man, well. yeah. <laughs> everyone just, a, everyone just forgets him. about him. Like, he was so good in Black Lightning he's season amazing. one. Yeah. Like, he's amazing. I'm so happy he's like coming back. Especially because as the season went on, he didn't really, he wasn't really the main villain, no. really, of season one. He kind of started off with it, but then it kind of became the NSA and that other guy. Uh, but yeah. And then we also got the first poster for Arrow Season 7, oh, um, which looks awesome, worse. awesome. <laughs> it's really cool. You see Oliver in his jumpsuit in slab side. Uh, you get to see his face. He's completely bruised and cut up all over the place. Um, and I really just love the tone of the poster, how dark it is. It's just a really good reflection of what we're going to be seeing. It's awesome. It's... Only thing that confuses me a little bit is the tagline. It says revelation and repentance. Like, what is going to be revealed, and why is he repenting? Is yeah. he meant to be sorry? Because repentance means being sorry for something. So, is he sorry for being the Green Arrow? Yeah, I, I don't know. I guess it's maybe just one of the things where it's like, oh, it sounds cool, we'll throw it in, and it has literally nothing related yeah, to the I mean, actual episode. I, mean, I, I, I did say that in my poster breakdown. I was just like, yeah, it's pro it is probably just, you know, cool words, but... Yeah, I just find it a bit... But as someone who looks into these things, as we do, you know, it's just kind of like one of them things I was like, what does that really mean? Uh, but it's a cool post nonetheless. Yeah, it's just... Uh, and it's interesting to point out because this is the only Arrow poster, like main poster, where Oliver's not wearing a suit. Yeah, I mean, it, it's 
really really weird but i guess it's just cool as well because it really does highlight the fact that this ain't just going to be a one episode oh it's me i'm breaking out no this is like something that is going to be staying for quite some time which I- i'm happy this like poster like reaffirms like I-, I think it'd be really badass if this was the actual like imagine when the season seven like blu-ray comes out and this is the cover That's art the like cover. that that'd to be, be fair, a real stance that would yeah to be fair it normally is it, yeah like normally the first poster they release is the one like i remember like the season six poster where you know it's like the tagline was live to fight another day and it's oliver like crouched down with, yeah like, you know, rubble kind of all around him and that's that's on the season six blu-ray which comes out on monday here in the uk boy um i'll be so, on holiday i'll be on holiday though so i won't be able to watch it also comes out the same day as infinity war and also they're releasing um crisis on earth x on a standalone dvd so yeah I'll yeah but, yeah but you know if you buy the season six blu-ray it comes with all all four parts does it yeah it comes with all four parts because the dvd is oh. not being released on blu-ray so to compensate they've um like put if you buy any of the seasons you they all come they with all four year. parts yeah i know they didn't do it last year but this year they are which... i bought the invasion dvd last year oh yeah. my god i've never watched it <laughs> it only cost seven quid um <laughs> But yeah, I think this is a really cool poster. It's great. And also one thing, I mean, obviously we like to talk quite a lot of shit about Mark Guggenheim on this podcast, and I'd like to continue to do so. He said uh, about this po- about this poster, he said, because people were talking about, oh, because this is like an episode for the first, or this is a poster for the first episode, all of us getting out in the first episode. And Mark Guggenheim basically took the poster and tweeted it out saying, would the CW make a po- poster for one episode? Basically implying that, no, this isn't one episode, this is a lot more. And while that's cool that he's saying that and he's addressing that, what he said was, would the CW ever make a poster for one episode? Yes. Yes, they would. They've done it before. They did it on The Flash all the time. <laughs> I swear they've even done it for Arrow as well, for the freaking crossovers. <laughs> yeah, and even so, like, Flash, they do, like, especially when you get into the back half, they do, like, episodes every week. <laughs> they do, like, new posters. <sighs> like, I remember in season four, they did the Amunet Black one, and there was a um like cisco and and um gypsy one and then there was one for the finale with the torn costume yeah like, there was also oh. they did one for the episode before the finale with caitlin and cisco like they do one like... yeah so, i mean i understand what he's saying but it's just like get your facts right <laughs> yeah get your facts right google i'm little shit yeah so happy you're not on the show well he's still executive producer i don't care i don't care he's, he's a consultant he's not the showrunner uh, well, I, I just always rip Guggenheim because it's always fun to. It's always fun to rip the guy Rise who gave us season four. Um, so, we're going to move over to Titans. Oh, uh, God. Fuck oh. Ba- the fuck Batman show, is that what we're... The, the edgiest show of all time. The edgy show. We're going to call it the edgy show from now on. It's no longer Titans, it's the edgy show. <laughs> so, the edgy show uh, was officially announced last night to be <laughs> premiering on October the 12th of this year. Oh, um, so I, edgy. I, we're going to release it before Halloween. <laughs> I mean... The actual DC Universe streaming service, because they did a big live stream with Kevin Smith last night. Oh, and bang. Uh, it was confirmed to be like September the 15th, I think it was. The actual service is launching. Doesn't mean anything to us here in the UK because we're not getting it. Um, Yay. But uh, such is the modern world. But yeah, it's coming out on October the 12th for The Edgy Show. And it's going to be really cool to actually see it because I know that we're not exactly the most excited about it, but I'm still <laughs> going to give it a go. Um, they also released like the character posters, which are even more edgy. You know, which, you know, I hope so because it's called oh. the edgy. Thing. I hope <laughs> Just look at Raven; she looks so edgy on that post. <laughs> and then Beast Boy with that PS4 control in the background, like you mentioned earlier. <laughs> Hardcore gamer. Hardcore gamer Beast Boy. It's just an edgy, incredible Hulk. And Pretty then, much. and then Robin's just an edgy Jason Todd. Raven's just an edgy teenager. But you notice as well on on the Robin poster, his dead parents are stood behind him like the bodies of his parents are behind him <laughs> oh that's so edgy <laughs> i mean oh my for one, his parents God. didn't die in his apartment and even if they did why is he taking the bodies out <laughs> like, come on mate. oh my god yeah yeah they also announced that they're going to be releasing it on a weekly format so basically it would just oh, be yeah. it would just be like they're releasing the first episode on october the, i can't remember when the date was, was it october the 12th and then i after every week after for 13 weeks they'll be slowly releasing the other episodes week by week so yeah. i think that's interesting to do it because obviously you know netflix they'll always just put them all out at once so i think doing it by a weekly basis i, I think it's actually kind of cool because then at least it gives you time to like digest the episode and then yeah, you can always i'm not really a big fan of the way netflix just releases all the episodes yeah and just yeah. Like 
because everyone you always feel forced to binge them so you can, like you can catch up. Yeah, so, so you can spoil. Yeah, you're not, not get... very good with binging. Yeah, because I hate it when it's like yeah they just put it all at once and then you kind of feel forced to have to watch as many as possible, and especially for like someone like me who doesn't really have a lot of spare time to like watch yeah. Netflix. It just feels like it's even more pressure put on you to not get spoiled, which. I just don't really enjoy I like to go at my own pace, so I think releasing it weekly is probably the best thing. That's also the only positive thing they announced from it that would made me go like, oh, that's good, because everything else was just a uh, shit, in my opinion. Yeah, I think that it's just like, I mean, I'm actually a lot more excited about Doom Patrol. Like, I yeah, that sounds a lot cooler, and it's just like, they, they announced that, like, Brendan Fraser's playing Robot Man. Yes, so, like, but <laughs> he is I, the OG Nathan Drake, just saying it right now. Yeah, yeah he actually is. <laughs> um... I'm I'm a lot more excited for Doom Patrol than I am for Titans. Yeah. So yeah, I mean I guess we we'll just have to wait for like a trailer for that. Although that's not even started filming yet. That's that's way off. Mm. Um, so we also got images for the first new Pop Funkos for the Flash. Um, this is quite an interesting topic. I mean I I didn't really know if I was going to include this or not, but I mean I'm I'm you know Arrowverse is quite well associated with its Funko Pops, uh, and we certainly collect them. I know I do. Um, I've got a whole load of Arrowverse ones. Um. But they've released some ones for the Flash, so we're getting a new season four suit one. We got we're getting Wally West. We're also getting Jay Garrick and Vibe. Nice. Oh, that what, getting all of them. Yeah. <laughs> what I really like about the, those is the Wally and the Flash season four suit ones. They're both they're in running, the running yeah. poses, which I really like, and I love the fact that they're also opposite as well, so you can line them up together. Yeah. Like, oh, it's so. Good. I've been wait. I've been waiting for a Kid Flash one for such a long time. Yeah, I'm like surprised. It. I'm surprised it's taking him this long because he's such a big character in the Flash canon. Like, why would it take you till now to actually make him? Why is it taking him this long to make more Flash on Go Pops? Yeah, I mean, we, I mean, we're still waiting for the Arrow ones. Like, we still need, still waiting on my Prometheus. <laughs> black still Sa- waiting. Still waiting for my Black Siren one. Yep. Still waiting for my Wild Dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they better do a Wild Dog. Oh. But like, I'm surprised they haven't done that yet. Like, they haven't done, especially because that was like two seasons back when we got Renee. Um. You know, I just find it surprising that we haven't got any like new Team Arrow members or, you know, or Prometheus. Like, I just, I really want a Prometheus, unmasked Prometheus, because I've got like unmasked Deathstroke. I really want an unmasked. Prometheus. Yeah. But yeah, like the season four Barry looks really cool. I love Kid Flash. Jay Garrick's really nice because I think haven't they done a Jay Garrick? But it was the Hunter Zolomon Jay. Garrick. Yeah, Hunter Zolomon Jay Garrick. Yeah. Yeah. So this is like jay garrick jay garrick mm. um and then vibe looks very good as well i like that one a lot um just in terms of the look of it it's cool and the pose is very nice um, better have a killer frost one yeah the, yeah like they haven't done that either um they need to give her like the season four costume because that that's probably her best one yeah I, I like the blue on that one it's nice it would work well on a funko um but yeah i mean it's quite interesting to talk about funkos on this but uh yeah i just kind of wanted to include it because i'm excited for the new funko pops <laughs> I mean, I've had to kind of stop myself from buying them recently because I've got no room for them and I was spending way too much money. But yeah, I but always said to myself, if I see Arrowverse ones, I will get them. Yeah, yeah and if he sees the Officer K one, but he won't get it because I still have to give it to you at Heroes and Villains. Yeah. <laughs> I'll get that eventually. But like at Heroes and Villains this year, I got like Reverse Flash, as you'd know, which I was looking for. It was like the last Arrowverse Funko Pop at the entire convention and I got it. Um, so that was Reverse Flash and that was... Re- and I've got that set up there right now. And I also found, because uh, in Chester, where I'm from, there's a shop called, it's actually called Central City. And it's basically the best place to get Funkos. It's kind of like a really small, like, Forbidden Planet type thing. Um, and you go in there, they've got, like, a massive selection of Funko Pops. And uh, I actually found a New York Comic Con exclusive Legends of Tomorrow Hawk Girl in there, which I now have. Which is Wow, uh, Hawk cool. Girl. Wow. Not the greatest character, but it's New York Comic Con exclusive, so that's cool. Wow. Uh, okay. Costs 20 quid, but... Exactly, twenty quid on a Funko. Doesn't even have a bubble head. It's not even good. Yeah. Oh well. Anyway, enough talking about Funko Pops. We've still <laughs> got like loads of news. Um, so the character known as Looker is going to be coming to Black Lightning uh, in season two, and this is now the second member of the Outsiders who has now been confirmed for Black Lightning. So this basically tells me that one of the main things they might be doing next season is the Outsiders. Um, yeah. Who are a really cool group from the comics. Uh, basically just a group of kind of vigilantes and superheroes and it seems like they are definitely going to be doing that in season two so that's really cool no casting on them yet but they've released the casting description so yeah i'm, I'm pretty excited about that yeah same um, same because it's black lightning i love black lightning i just like for season it's nice, two it's nice to talk about black lightning this week <laughs> yeah because we never usually talk about it quite often <laughs> i'm actually gonna do a black lightning video tomorrow i've actually got a cool idea to like 
So I'm going to include that. I've got like, a couple other things as well, so that's cool. Um, yeah. yeah, it's nice to have Black Lightning in here this week. Um, and we also got a quote from Stephen Amell, which is complete BS, if you ask me. Mm. But he said, he said that fans will never guess what is going on with Roy Harper in season seven. Really, which tells me that everyone else, that really? everyone has guessed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> green arrow. I'm sorry, but the last time I heard someone on the CW say something like this it was Grant Gustin about Savitar's identity, and by the time it was revealed, everybody knew who it was. So I Even just don't... more recently than that, Todd Helbing and Nora Allen. Oh yeah, he did as well. <laughs> Even more recently than that, so yeah. Fans will never be able to guess, which means you probably have guessed, but I'm just yeah. going to say you haven't, just so you feel smart. Well, the thing is, like, watching the Season 7 trailer, who else is it going to be in that suit? <laughs> like, Roy is the... Like, like the Konomi... It, it can't be... be is Diggle, but it's not going to be yeah. Diggle, because and it, it just... It, and it, it won't be... And it won't be Konomi Rhodes, because it's like... It, you can tell that the shape is built like a yeah. man. Like, yeah, it's a man's it's a physique, man, yeah. so it's definitely not Konomi Rhodes. And like, we know Roy is in episode one, so it's Roy. It is, it's, it's Roy. It's your boy Roy. <laughs> my, he is my boy Roy. <sighs> so hyped for that. It's genuinely like the thing I'm most looking forward to is season seven. In that oh my the, Roy is, is back. <laughs> um, we also got our first look at the new Harrison Wells next season. Um, so he's his name is supposedly Sherlock Wells. Um, I'm interested to find out what Earth he's from. Uh, we didn't find that out, um, but apparently this Wells is is kind of like a combination of Harry and HR, in the sense that he's quite funny and he's quite a comedic presence, but you're not quite sure whether you can trust him or not. Mm. So that to me is like a blend of Harry and HR. Um, so I'm pretty excited about that. Um, I think this one is going to be a bit more dickish, which I think it will be quite fun. Um, oh, very much so. Plus, if he's like, if this is Sherlock Wells, which obviously Sherlock detective, him and Ralph, that's yeah, the team that, right that, that'd that be cool. That'd be a good way to kind of segue into like Ralph's story, like him doing more detective work. If he like hires him and he like do some detective work together, that, I think that could be quite interesting. Yeah. So, I mean, in terms of the actual look of him himself, it's not really anything too special. He's kind of wearing like a waistcoat and a chain. Um, looking a bit more French than usual because the way Sherlock is written is with a Q, yeah. so it's like Q U E, so it is a bit different. It's gonna uh, I don't know if that's the confirmed name or not, or if that's just kind of what's floating around. I haven't seen anything official confirmed. I reckon that. it's I reckon it's probably just like a nickname that people throw around, and it's like oh they've just like attached it yeah, on. Yeah, why would his name be Sherlock? I mean, this is Harrison Wells. Why would it be? It doesn't really make much sense. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm I'm happy we are getting the new Wells because. I was kind of disappointed by the fact we got Harry last season. Even though I love Harry, he's probably my favorite Wells. I uh, I kind of like the idea of like every season you get a new Wells, so I yeah. kind of wanted a new one. So I'm happy about that. Um, and then we also got some news for Arrow. Beth Schwartz has hinted that we might see smoke technologies next season, or at least the foundations of it. Can it just be like named uh, in the name of Felicity when she dies this season? Please say it is. When she dies this season. Just kill um, Felicity off. Just kill her and William off. Have it happen by Ricardo Diaz. Don't make it a dream sequence. If you do that, I'll give the season a 10 out of 10. Also, make Ricardo Diaz chop off Oliver's arm. Yes, do it, please. Um, But yeah, Smoke Technologies was in Legends of Tomorrow in that Future Star City episode. Best episode of season one. <sighs> yeah. Um, So yeah, I mean, this is basically tells me this is like the evolution of Helix Dynamics. Yeah. Which begs the question what happens to helix dynamics and where's curtis what's he doing <laughs> yeah like <laughs> is curtis just not involved anymore is he hanging around with that boyfriend who we barely see and hasn't been mentioned since he was shot in season six so we always say renee is at the question mark next season we haven't seen anything about curtis <laughs> well, we'll say, i think echo kellum recently got like a haircut i think curtis gets a new style next season because like he's like shaved his afro now has he mm-hmm. oh yeah. no how that, that's, like, just, put it down, maybe. that's just that's just wrong. I can't, I I can't imagine him without that afro. <laughs> I mean, maybe it comes up in the story where every time he gets into the Mister Terrific costume, he has to braid his curls, and it doesn't make sense. But <laughs> oh my God. which is true because like how he has to braid his hair in like two minutes doesn't make sense. Um, so maybe that might be it. But yeah, he's he's, he's definitely had a haircut. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, smoke tech, sure, whatever. <laughs> yeah, sure. Don't give a fuck. But the most exciting news of the week, and this is like extremely exciting, I 
this was like news I didn't even expect. It kind of came out of nowhere. It was the last thing I expected, but it's to do with the crossover. Yeah, but it's been no, 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 no. Oh. Let's just establish this. You just said that. I thought the thing that you least expected the most was Roy Harper to return as a series regular. No, no, I thought about the crossover. Oh, uh, okay. I understand now. God, you broke my flow. <laughs> uh, it's been officially confirmed that Superman is coming to the crossover this year. Oh, that's just news. That was what I needed to get me back on board for this crossover. Well, after, after, yeah. after Legends not being a part of it and the Batwoman stuff, I was not looking forward to this, but the fact that Superman is in it has got me back on board. I'm not going to lie, when I first heard this news, I thought it was fake, because I was like, there's no way they're going to have Superman for this crossover. And it's like, I read it, and it was proper, and it was like... That, that, I mean, I want to know how many deals and paperwork they had to sign to get this through. Like, to get Superman on the crossover. like I um... reckon Warner Brothers have just said, look, Justice League is bombed. We don't know what we're doing with Superman. Man of Steel 2 is probably never going to happen. We're even doing a Supergirl movie now. We're not going to do Superman in time soon. You can just have him for three episodes. Yeah. Because it has been confirmed he's going to be in every episode of the crossover, which is even more surprising. I thought he would have been in, like, just one. Yeah. And, like, it would have been in the last episode, which is coincidentally the Supergirl episode. Um. But no, he's going to be in it from the beginning to the end. Good, amazing, oh, amazing. It's got. I mean, I mean, it's good news. But I, I mean, I'm happy for it. But then, like when they announced the news afterwards about the Supergirl episode being about gun control, that kind of did bring my hopes down. <laughs> but <laughs> I mean, we'll talk about that maybe afterwards in a bit. But we'll just focus on Superman yeah. for now. But it's like, yeah, I'm really happy for this, especially because. Oh, sorry, that that was the most exciting news of the week. I forgot to put that one. In. <laughs> Oh god! Uh, but no, it's no. like I- I'm really happy that he's back in it because Tyler Hecklon, I love his Superman. It's I would, so ar- good. I would argue, I prefer it to Henry Cavill. I don't give a fuck. Oh, I definitely do. I, I, I do. I do. Like, like <laughs> D- DCEU fanboys can hate me all I want and type in hashtag release Snyder Cut all they want. A, it's not happening. Oh my god. A, it's oh, not- sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> you know, in the DC Universe live stream last night, people were spamming release the Snyder Cut in the chat. <laughs> were they actually? Yeah, I swear to God. That's oh true. my God, get a life! It doesn't have it. It doesn't exist. It's it not doesn't gonna happen. Exist. It's not gonna happen. It's like me just sitting there begging for a dread sequel. It ain't gonna happen. So I've given up on it. Just give up. It's not happening. It's not happening. No. Get a life. Besides, Tyler Hecklin's better. I said it. My I'm boy. sorry, but he is. I mean, I re- I did really like. I mean, I love Henry Cavill as an actor. I just don't think he's a good Superman. I mean, I liked him in Justice League because he actually acted happy. Like, he actually seemed like he wanted to be there. But, but then in Man of Steel and BVS, he's just he's depressing. Just <laughs> yeah. Whereas, whereas Tyler Heckle and Superman, he literally embraces everything. Like, he's like the new Christopher Reeve yes. Superman. Like, he's so perfect. And, like, the suit looks great. I mean, I'm a big fan of the suit. And yeah. it looks really cool. So I'm so happy. Like, I never expected this. In a million years, I never thought we would get Superman in the crossover, ever. And it's happening. And it's just insane because, like, not only are we getting that, obviously, we are getting Batwoman. I mean, obviously, we can say what we want about the casting, but point is, the character's coming. <laughs> and then we're getting Superman as well. Like, it's just like, they, what threat are they facing here that they need Superman? Like, what's happening? Oh, it gets I, me really hyped, man. I can't wait. It's going to be awesome. And also, Lois Lane is also coming, which is great. Um, <sighs> and she will be in the first episode of the crossover and the last episode of the crossover. So that's the Flash and the Supergirl episode. Um,. So Lois is also coming, which I mean, we had Lucy Lane on season Supergirl. season one, which I prefer to forget one, about, yeah. which we forget about. <laughs> we yeah. pretend that didn't happen. <laughs> so we are finally getting Lois, and that's also great. Um, I'd be very interested to see who they cast as her, because uh, obviously we know the Superman casting. Obviously we know Tyler Hecklin, we've seen him before, but this is quite interesting who, who they're going to pair up with him, um, especially because I mean she's been name dropped a few times, but we've never actually seen her. So I'm excited about that as well. Oh, so that's all the news. There was actually quite a lot there. You uh, forgot that you forgot the Supergirl oh, gun yeah, yeah, control yeah, yeah, yeah. thing. Yeah, sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, <laughs> we, got, we got the most important and most exciting news. That I forgot to throw in that Supergirl season four is going to be continuing the gun control debate started in season three. <laughs> the most exciting and most you know edge of the seat plot line throughout the entire season that had us all on strings. <laughs> it's finally coming back. It created the most hilariously bad episode of the season. <laughs> I'm, I'm down for it. I'm down for it. I want it. Oh, please. If I this, it. Please let this be in the crossover and I'll just sit there laughing. <laughs> Superman just like, all he, all he says the entire episode is just like, anti-gun control. <laughs> oh, 
I mean, I literally when I saw when this news report came out like yesterday, yeah, I, I just seen it and I just laughed. Like I just found it like the fact that they actually made a report about this. I was like, okay. Oh my god, it it's amazing. This is why we love Supergirl. It's just the best show for the memes. Yeah, it's just quality, and uh, I'm definitely I'm I, I'm a hundred percent hyped for it. Oh, defo. <laughs> Yeah. Can we have the whole season be about gun control? I'll take that. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, we will move on to our main topic, um, which is continuing our series of top five episodes. So this is our top five episodes for The Flash, season five, uh, up oh, season four, sorry. Um, oh, this man's getting it wrong. He's unprofessional. I said top five and then I went, yeah, I said five before. Oh, um, this point. So you actually already know mine because I sent it to you by accident, but I don't know yours. Uh, so this is still exciting. So seeing as you're the mystery man, we're going to let you go first. Oh, with this... your number five. Oh, this is this is cruel. This is you know, because the thing is, I like my top three. I want to say were like pretty much like dead on. Like I knew what they were, but four and five, like I, I kind of swapped in between because I didn't really know who I was going to go with. Um, yeah, I was kind of the same. Yeah, so for me, I'm, I'm, it's hard. Like, I'm still thinking about it now, but I'll probably say for the number five pick, I'll probably have to go with. Um, oh, this this is hard. This is see, I didn't think it'd be this difficult because I was like, oh, I, I I didn't particularly enjoy season four all that much, but it's like ranking the five episodes. I knew which five episodes I was gonna have, but it's like which order do I put them in? Fucking hell, this is this is like the equivalent of choosing between your kids. <laughs> I didn't mean to get so deep with that, but it had to happen. Uh, I'm going to put the mid-season finale as uh, my number five. Okay. Um, the reason I put this one slightly below is only because of the whole way that um, like Barry is like arrested for the death of DeVoe. I just felt like it was a little bit forced in the terms of I think he could have very easily just done it and it just... Uh, that bit does annoy me a little bit, especially when I went, when I rewatch it. Like that part yeah, does, like Barry could have like he just kind of gives up. Yeah, like, you could have easily resolved that situation. It's just like oh, can't be asked, mate. And it's just he, he doesn't do it, and it's like I don't know. Um, I, I, that was like the biggest part that that, that kind of bugged me. Also, the Devo body hopping thing I, I didn't like either because it yeah, like kicks like it kick started that, and I didn't really enjoy it. Um, and also the bit where like Barry's like clinging onto Devo's chair, and it's like around the city. I didn't. Ma- I thought it was cool the first time around. Then I realized how like goofy it was, and it was like, Ugh. but apart from that, I really enjoyed the episode. I love like the mind games that are played between him and Devo when he's stuck in Devo's lair. That's really really cool. Yeah, that's um, cool, yeah, that was like some really really cool stuff, and like just Team Flash and like all the stuff that they're doing, like trying to find Barry whilst he's you know stuck in Devo's lair. I just really enjoyed that episode mainly because of the back and forth between him. And Devo, I really enjoyed that, and I really enjoyed that kind of clash of ideologies because we got to see that even more. Like they were my favourite parts of season four by far. So it also started for the, uh, it also started the best line of dialogue for Barry that he insisted on repeating all season. Devo, Devo, oh, like just screaming his name. Oh, that, that that's that's I mean, the best. Cool. I think you like it. It's quite cool. But it's it's quite like, cool, but it's like it says it so many fucking times. <laughs> like, it was like I think it was like five separate promos for the episodes where it's just like every Devo, Devo. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's like there's episode eighteen is like the entire thing, like the entire background noise is just him screaming Devo. Like it's just like yeah, it's it's cool, but it's just like it happens so often. Oh, but no, that, I, I really enjoyed the episode just primarily for that reason. I really, really did enjoy it. Um, so yeah, for that for that for that reason alone, it's why I put it at number five. Yeah, I like that episode. Um, my number five. This is a bit of a controversial pick. Um, just I know a lot of people weren't the biggest fan of this episode, but I actually loved this episode. Um, and that is episode four, the elongated journey into night. Uh, this was the introduction of Ralph Dibney, who is one of my favorite parts of the season. I I love Ralph. Um. And this was his introduction. I just really enjoyed this episode. Also, I have to show Tom Cavanaugh some love. You know, he directed this episode. Um, I've loved both episodes that Tom Cavanaugh has directed now. Um, I think he's a great director on The Flash. And um, I just enjoyed this episode. I like I like the comedy. I really like Ralph. You know, kind of just how he was just such a dick in this episode. <laughs> and this was like, you know, his first major introduction. And 
you know, I will never forget the scene. I, I'll never forget it. You know, as soon as the camera pans into the lab and it's just Ralph sprawled out all over the bed and all over the room, just its arms and legs everywhere. And like Caitlin, like completely pulls his arm out. And um, like, you know, Barry, <laughs> Barry tries to punch him and his fist just goes through his face. And then Ralph like manages to get rid of his fat, like just by, you know, stretching. I just think it's really cool. It was a really awesome introduction to really enjoyed it. And yeah, I just, I just thought the episode was fun. Also, we got the introduction of Breacher in that episode. Danny Trejo is Breacher, um, who I, you know, he was only in a couple of <clears throat> a couple of episodes of the season, um, but it was really cool in the episode. And obviously, that started the dynamic between him and Cisco, which was fun. And even just the dynamic between Barry and Ralph, I really enjoyed. You know, their history, the fact that I mean, we really got to see Barry like really sort of hate somebody. Like we've never seen him like have like this real kind of you know problem with somebody before. Mm. And he really like had a problem with Ralph. You know, he actually he tried to punch him. Um, so I enjoyed that, and because I've always enjoyed the relationship between Barry and Ralph and the way that kind of developed as the season went on. So yeah, I just I really liked this episode. A lot of people didn't, but I really enjoyed it. So that's my number five. Mm. Nah, it's uh, it's funny you say that because uh, that is actually my number four. Is um, the Elon Gate is joining tonight? That that that's my number Ooh. four on this list as well because. I get why it's a controversial episode because obviously I know Ralph has been a very divisive character, but I really liked him uh, as a character because it kind of gave gave us like a different kind of a hero, like somebody who really does start out like a, kind of like a jackass, and then over the course of the season has to learn to become a hero properly. Like he's not like Barry, where he's already a good intended intention person and then becomes a hero. This is kind of a guy who has like bad intentions, but is then forced to realize like that the errors of his ways and become a hero and i really like the episode just because of the way that they like gave us the backstory on him and barry's like previous like how how they worked with each other in the past like the fact that they didn't get on at all and this was kind of like the big starting block for them forming a friendship and a partnership and i really just like that i thought the special effects in this episode were honestly really good like yeah. very very good um tom cavanaugh just like he, uh, it's weird because like when you imagine actors like directing an episode of like a show that they're in i always find it kind of like a gimmicky thing because it's like oh they're doing it and it's like especially yeah. when it's tom cavanaugh because it's like oh it's like the experience to get actor but like he's really proved himself because i mean the episode he directed in season three uh what was it the ones the ones of future flash yeah yeah, yeah. Flash. yeah it was Great one of episode. My, that was one of my favorite episodes of that season the same with this one he just he clearly knows what to do when it comes to just, just just the action and the comedy and the more emotional moments it's just really good at building all that up i really like the final confrontation with um like ralph starting to use his powers and accepting his like superior personality and yeah. i just really like the episode like the comedy worked for me which is like something that i haven't really felt throughout most of the season i think the only comedy scene that didn't make sense was the whole like scene back at star labs when like joe tells barry that he, you know cecile's pregnant that was the only like joke in the whole episode that didn't land the rest of it i thought was pretty funny like you said the the scene where like caitlin pulls ralph's arm off or like where barry gets his fist stuck in ralph's mouth like yeah. th those were genuinely funny moments and i just really liked this episode and it was just yeah i get why it's controversial but it just worked for me and it ended up standing out a lot more than a lot of the other episodes that we got this season which is why i put it at number four yeah I mean, I wouldn't say I like it more than the Once in Future Flash in terms of like Tom Cavanaugh episodes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's still one of my favorite episodes. Yeah, of I guess it's because of the, I guess it's because the kind of like two different episodes because like the Once in yeah. Future Flash is a quite a dark episode, like especially yeah, because dark, yeah. because of how you see Barry and how like you know the, what what happened with Savitar affected him. Whereas this episode is a bit more lighthearted. Like I don't think it's as good. Like my biggest problem with the episode is the main antagonist of the mayor. Like, it just felt like a very forced antagonist, like, very much like a villain of the week, but he had, like, no relevance to the actual story. Like, that was my biggest problem with that episode. But, like, apart from that, I thought the episode as a whole d did work quite well, especially, like, for more of a light-hearted episode. Yeah. No, I, I, I like that episode a lot. Um, my number four is... Well, it's probably the best named episode of the season it reminds <laughs> us of a brilliant line of dialogue which came earlier in the season that really struck a chord with me and the entire flash audience it really driven us to our core 
and really brought us together as a community. <laughs> and that is the season finale, beautifully called We Are The Flash. Um, <laughs> I mean, besides the awful title, I really like the finale. And I, I, I know me and you kind of differ on this a little bit, but I think the reason I went, I think the reason I enjoyed the finale a lot more is because I really wasn't looking forward to it. Mm. I was really like at this point, especially like episode 22, 23, I was really just done with the season. I was kind of just like, like, especially after episode 21, I was like, I'm really not feeling it. I'm not enjoying it. Like these episodes, they're just not, they're not doing it for me at all. Like even in season three, like I was kind of like, I mean, despite how terrible the finale was, like episode 22 of season of season three was amazing mm. um season four just didn't have that and by this point i was just really not looking forward to it and even like i mean i woke up early that morning so i could watch it before i went to work and you know i still did that and i and i came out of it very positive i really enjoyed it i think it was a really good wrap-up to the season i love the fact that barry and ralph actually went into the mindscape i thought that was really or barry went into it and met up with ralph in the mindscape i thought that was really cool and the way they used, you know, Ralph and Barry's powers together, fighting like a million DeVos Matrix style, uh, that was really nice. Um, and I think that the way sort of, you know, Ralph was able to defeat DeVo there was was really awesome as well. I just, I, I just really enjoyed it, and I think it's just because it came off to be, you know, a lot more pleasant than what I expected because I wasn't looking forward to it at all. Uh, we got Nora Allen at the end, which I liked, gave a good setup for season five. It was just there was a lot of good stuff in the episode, and I enjoyed it. And I think it was just a really good wrap up to season four, and you know, pretty much paved the way for season five. So I think it was more of a surprise than anything else. So yeah, I think it deserves a spot. Mm. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd say the same. I mean, I, I, like I said, I didn't enjoy the episode as much as you did, but I think that's just like I went into it with like low expectations as well. Like I don't think it's a bad episode, but. I just can't say it was one of my favourites just because there was still a few problems I had with the episode. The whole hologram DeVoe thing just felt not necessary to me. Like, it kind of just, like, felt like you already had kind of, like, that big comeuppance moment when Ralph, like, morphs out of DeVoe's body. And then to have that hologram DeVoe just felt pointless to me. Like, it kind of felt like just something that they added in. Just be like, oh, let's have more DeVoe. Let's, like, make them think he's back. But it just didn't really turn out to be much. Because it was literally just, oh, it's just uninstall a hard drive on his chair and he's dead. Like, it just felt useless. Uh, the way that they defeated DeVoe by Ralph morphing into him was cool. But it created a load of, like, issues story-wise. Like, does Ralph now have all of DeVoe's powers? Does he not? Like, they never explained that. They just kind of glossed over it. Um, the whole reveal of you know uh, Nora Allen at the end was incredibly predictable, and I found it to be a bit of a weak cliffhanger because there was really really no mystery because we all kind of knew who who she was anyway. Um, and the episode itself, it, I mean, I, I like the idea of him going into the mindscape. It just didn't work out for me uh, in terms of like how I would have preferred it to have played out. I just I don't know. I just there was something missing from it for me personally. But um, yeah, I kind of get that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, oh God, I've got to try and look at my list again because I've already forgotten what my number three is. So, that's how amazing this season is. I can't even remember where I rank my episodes. It's amazing. This is a lot easier of a list to do than Supergirl. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's it's far easier than Supergirl. It's just I've got a shit memory when it comes to remembering episodes. Uh, I've got it here. Uh, my number three is uh, episode 18, Lose Yourself. Um, I will I... also say my number three is also Lose Yourself. Oh, God's sake. Um... I really like this episode because it's it, it very much felt like you know we, we, we were getting in, I remember it came at a time when I, know, I think I don't know if you were the same but for me personally like I was starting to get really really tired when it came to the flash because you're in kind of yeah. a bit of a dull period and this was like kind of the episode that brought me back up and was like oh do you know what the flash can be really really good again and it was because it came after the Kevin Smith episode yeah the Kevin Smith episode and the run Irish run episode like I was like Ugh. and then it came back with this and I was really really pumped up for the remaining like five episodes that we had um i really just like this episode uh, like loads like you know getting to see the folding man and like uh, his yeah. powers as well him being the last bus meta that was like a really cool thing so it's like this big moment to finally have all these bus metas like that the, the we'd finally met all of them um the devote like attacking them in star labs it was kind of cool it kind of reminded me a bit of a horror film just because of the way like he was chasing after him in star labs throughout a lot of the second half of the episode like I, I thought that was a really really cool like 
thing and it made it quite different to the other episodes. Um, of course, you got um, Neil Sanderland's returning as Defoe in this episode. Even though it's at the very end, it made me very happy because I was like, we're never going to see him again, are we? And then when we saw him as Defoe, it was like, it brought the biggest smile to my face. So I was happy for that. So after that amazing abrupt cut we just had because of my awful connection, I was talking about how much I really liked Ralph uh, abruptly turning into DeVoe. That's like the worst segue of all time. We're going to continue. Um, I, re- <laughs> um, I really liked that just because, you know, it was really quite dark because you had Barry like watching the whole thing and like Barry like saying, oh, I'll save you. And then, you know, you know, Ralph's like Ralph's like Ralph's like you already have and like it was super dark but I really enjoyed it it was like it was one of the few moments in season four that felt like the kind of tone you got in those first three seasons and I felt like it really worked in that moment it, it was really impactful because you felt that connection that him and Barry had like built up the entire episode and what we kind of built up with Ralph it was just it was so well done and as an episode it really stood out for me just because of the fact that it was it felt very much like a tense and claustrophobic episode because you always had DeVoe coming after you like it really did kind of feel like a like a slasher film like in a way like you've got DeVoe just like stalking Team Flash because obviously he needs uh, the, like the folded man's powers to complete like all of his powers of the bus matters and it, it was just really cool I really enjoyed the episode and it was very emotional for that moment as well um, the only real issue I had was the whole Iris and the uh, Iris, like Iris, in that episode is just stupid. Like she, she, she stabs herself. Like, she, how are you such an idiot to do that? The like, problem with Iris, with with it, within season four as a whole, is that they made her way too competent. Like they made her like, I mean, it's fine, obviously, making so that she can handle herself. But she was like, you know, competent beyond the point that her character never was. Yeah, like, you know, it just didn't make sense given what we yeah. knew of her before. Uh, yeah, and then yeah. she and then she just goes ahead and stabs herself in this episode in that fight with Marlies, which makes me laugh every time. But it's still negative. But other than that, I really like the episode. Um, yeah, it's my that's my number three. So after a second uh, <laughs> internet malfunction <laughs> with Discord, um, we will continue the list. Uh, my number three was lose yourself, just like Dan's. Uh, basically, just take everything he said. And yeah, I agree. Um, <laughs> Number two for you. Oh, you can tell we're whizzing through these. I'm just going to try my best to not speak as much because I just <laughs> we just need to get through these. Uh, my number two is therefore I am because I I, I just love this episode. It's focused on Neil Sanderlands as the thinker, which is really good. I love the flashbacks to him before the events of the pilot episode of the Flash. Like that that stuff was really cool. It really like helped flesh out him and Marley's relationship. And I, I, I just, it's so, it's so good. I think it's one of the best, like, villain focus episodes. And just to see him and Barry interact in real life, like, just in him as, like, Clifford DeVoe and not so much the thinker was really cool to see. Like, that that was the episode that really convinced me on Neil Sanderlands as the thinker. Like, he was so good in that episode. The whole, like, side plot of Barry trying to investigate him, but him looking, like, really dodgy as if he's trying to stalk DeVoe and yeah. Marley's was really cool and interesting like it, it's such a good episode like it's really good it, for me it was like it was a mix up between this and number one because both of them for me are 10 out of 10s like i love these episodes so much but i just i love this episode it's it's for me like i said the best like villain centric episode of the flash by far yeah it is pretty cool i i, I, mean, I like that episode a lot it's probably a, i mean a lot of people do say it's the best episode of the season do they now? A lot of people do. Hmm. I wonder who here has it on their number one, based off <laughs> the list that I've already seen. Yes. Uh, spoilers for my number one. Uh, but my <laughs> number two is Enter Flash Time. Uh, the reason I didn't put this at number one is just because it's pure filler. Um, the episode is pure filler, but it's great. So yeah, whatever. It's it's a fantastic episode. It's just, I mean. It completely takes place entirely in Flash Time, which is that new power Barry got, which completely breaks the show because, well, Barry can just use that and get out of any situation <laughs> with that power. Um, but this was a big speed the team up episode. We got Barry, we got Jesse, we got Jay. I love it anytime Jay shows up. Um, so I was happy to have Jay. And yeah, this episode was just really cool. Like it's just it was like one of those episodes that you know just as fans we enjoy just seeing all. All the speedsters come back and 
seeing Barry, like one thing I love, like Grant Gustin gave a great performance in this episode. Yeah. This was probably this was probably his best episode of, of the season because the way he's just like, you know, crying and like stressed and he just, you know, because he's basically he's using the power throughout the entire episode, which is completely draining him of all of his energy. Like, it, I, I absolutely love the scene where he goes to Iris and, you know, he's holding Iris in flash time and he's just, like, sweating so much. Like, you can't even tell if it's sweat or tears because it's just his whole face is basically dripping wet and he's just crying, like, out of exhaustion. I think it's a great performance. I think he does a really good job. Then besides all that, just, again, it's just really cool to see, like, the big speed to the team up where we got to see Jesse come back, which was really great. You know, we always love when Jesse comes back and, like I said, Jay. I'm a big fan of Jay. I think Jay could have had a bit more to do, but yeah. um, that's just because I'm a fan of him. Um, but yeah, this episode is just really fun. It's just one of those episodes that, you know, it's smack bang in the middle of the season. It was super, super fun. Very much a filler episode, but perfectly enjoyable nonetheless. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, I understand like why you didn't put it in the one because it's filler. Like I, it's, it's viable enough. Um, but for me, uh, my number one is enter flash time. And while yes, I, I do think maybe technically from, that standpoint, yes, I can understand not being number one because it's filler. Because obviously, you, you'd want the number one to be something that's relevant to the overall arc in season. But the reason I put it number one for me was simply because when I went back to the episode this season that I had the most, that was the most engrossed watching, that was the most rewatchable, and the one that I think summed up the best parts of this season overall, I always think to that episode because it kind of reverted back to the time travel esque, esque like type of the flash which is what i've always loved like for me that is the best part of the flash not when it tries to do this like comedic stuff but when it takes on the embracing those time travel elements and that's what that episode did and i just really love that i love seeing all the speeds together it was really cool seeing you know like seeing jay garrick's awesome seeing you know just seeing jesse quick as well especially since it was like her only proper appearance this season like was was really cool to see as well and just to see them use the, their abilities and like the emotional toll that it takes on Barry, like it was such a satisfying episode to watch, and I really did enjoy it. And it was just super cool. I really enjoyed it all. The special effects were honestly amazing. Like I think some of the best special effects ever, especially when he goes into the Speed Force at the very end of the episode to create to, to like get the, the the Speed Force Lightning to chase him. Like it really cool. Um, and just overall as an episode, it worked so well as kind of like this episode of building Barry's confidence up, like as usually every season does. But for using that as kind of like the main motivator for this episode was just really cool. And also you got the side plots as well with um, Jesse and uh, Harry Wells, which I thought was done really well. And, uh, you know, the way that it's set up, you know, Jay Garrick and like his apprentice, which I've seen loads of people speculate about. Like, I, I just really enjoy that episode. And for me, it was like... The, it, had so much of what I loved about this season and uh, for me that was why I put it at number one just above uh, episode 7 because while I think episode 7 might be better in quality just in overall terms of enjoyment and watching and rewatchability and recommendation that I think like episode 15 is just slightly better like it just pips it for me yeah I really hope next season we get um, the reveal of who that apprentice is for Jay I really want like for the two-parter episode next season, which we didn't get this se- like in season four, I really want to go to Earth three. Yeah, just need. I we've only been to Earth three once, and I absolutely loved it. Like it's just because it's like um, it's really interesting because you have Earth one, which is obviously just like us normal, and then you have Earth two, which is like the dark reflection of Earth one. Earth three is like the super light reflection. Like it's just really fun and poppy. And do you know what? Do you know what uh, the aerial shots for um. Uh, three i found this out this week is actually hong kong i didn't know that oh i didn't know that no yeah it's actually it's actually hong kong the shots they use so like earth three central city is technically hong kong and also i'm re-watching arrow as you know and i'm currently on season three and obviously season three flashbacks are in hong kong and there's the same shots they use the same shots but obviously the filters are changed around so yeah um Damn. that's quite cool interesting um but yeah my number one as was already spoiled, is Therefore I Am, episode 7. Um, I do think this is the best episode of the season, just because I think it's so interesting. It was DeVoe's backstory, seeing the flashbacks, the way it was linked into the, into the Particle Accelerator, I think is really nice. Um, I think that's quite, like, you know, neatly tied up. And also, like, like you mentioned, I love the whole storyline and the whole premise of, like, Barry trying to basically 
you know stalk the devos and but he's coming across really dodgy and you know i, I believe this is the episode where he gets the restraining order is that yeah, right yeah yeah where he gets the restraining order on barry yeah yeah so devo gets a restraining order on barry which is really cool uh, I think that you know, because again, this was like this was back when Devo was amazing. Like this was back when Devo was smart, and again, actually being the thinker, because he wasn't like a physical threat, but he was just there. You know, oh, I need to stop Barry from getting anywhere near me. Boom, restraining order. He can't do anything. So like, you know, it was just it was a really cool way of doing it. And again, having Marlies there was awesome. Love seeing Marlies. Uh, Marlies probably my new favorite character on the show. I think Kim Engelbrecht is just incredible like i didn't think she got anywhere near enough attention as she deserved i think mm-hmm. she's amazing um she gave such a great performance throughout the season as well as it went on you know especially like in the trial of the flash episode and like in episode like you know the episode when she finds out she's being brainwashed as yeah. well like really good and this was like her first proper great performance and i just really enjoyed this episode and again barry kind of being kind of being stuck into those lair again was really cool it's just it's a great episode and i just think it's easily the best of the season and i just really enjoyed it i think it just perfectly exemplifies what season four should have been mm. it's kind of like what i wanted it to be and how i wanted the dynamic between barry and devoe to be um but unfortunately they didn't stick to that but i think it's just a great episode yeah that's my number one yeah i i can agree with that as well just yeah, just the, the the way that they portray Devoe in those like first, I want to I'm gonna say seven because eight was the crossover and nine was kind of where they began to fuck it all up. So yeah. the first seven episodes, the way that they portrayed him, and I guess like, I guess for the first three quarters of episode nine, yeah, so, and then he turned into Dominic. Yeah, <laughs> the way that they did it then. To be fair, I didn't mind Dominic too much. Like, no, the first time no, it, like, nah, okay. nah, nah. He was bad. Like he was just like, he was just like. I know your thoughts, Barry Allen. Like, no, it's shit. He was just doing an impression of Neil Sanderlands. For me, that's just... That's what I like, though. I like the fact that he was actually no, playing it. Like no, it. I thought that yeah, was cool. yeah, but it's like... It, it just it didn't work for me, because it, ultimately, he's doing an impression of somebody else, and I'm ultimately going to compare him to that person, and ultimately, for me at least, Neil Sanderlands just ultimately beats him, because he lacked any distinctive like characteristics of his own to help him like at least get any sense of attachment to him. It didn't work. And just the yeah, whole I mean, con- obviously we discussed this before. The entire body hopping thing just shouldn't happen. No, and I just didn't like Dominic because th- I just didn't like the actor. I didn't like the idea. Put two and two together, it doesn't. I just didn't like it at all. Like, and obviously, yeah, yeah, you might, you might like Dominic Lynx more. That's great. It just didn't work for me, and I didn't really like the actor all that much. Yeah. But that would be our top five episodes of the Flash season four. Um. There might not be a podcast next week. You're away, aren't you? Yeah, I'm away um, on holiday. Yeah, so unfortunately there won't be a podcast next week um, due to Dan being away. But after the week after that, we'll come back and we'll be doing our top five episodes of Legend Season 3, uh, the best season. So this is that's going to be the most difficult one to rank. Like, you know, are, you sure, are you sure it's going to be more difficult than Supergirl? Are you really sure about that? <laughs> yeah, but this is difficult in a different way. Like Supergirl, it was different to find five good episodes. This one's gonna be difficult because like every episode is good, so it's like every episode is like great. So I, it's gonna be really difficult to actually find you know the top five because like even like with Arrow and like with Flash, I kind of know what my top fives were instantly, like or at least like you know maybe not the exact order, but I knew sort of which episodes were gonna be in the list. Mm-hmm. With Legends, I'm just thinking about it now. I don't know what's gonna be in there. Yeah, it's like. I, there's literally so mm. many good episodes. Well, it's li- to well, from. well, it's easy for Arrow because you can literally just handpick any of a- any any of the last six episodes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, pretty much full spoilers now. I probably will go my last, my top five Arrow episodes will be the last five. <laughs> I don't know what specific order, but it'll be the last five episodes. What do you mean the last five episodes? That means you're not including the Prometheus one. No, it'd be 18, 19, 20, 21, 20. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna oh, well, have... actually, that's fine. No, that's completely fine because I know which one I'm taking out. That's don't, fine. Don't say. Don't say yep, the dragon. Yep, yep, don't say yep. the dragon. The dragon's coming out. No, coming out. you can't do Easily. this. Easily. You can't that's do this. Me. That makes if, it so much easier. I'm gonna tell this to Kirk Acevedo on Twitter. He's gonna come and hunt you down. Definitely. He already follows me. It's fine. <laughs> um, but that will be. <laughs> that, that's still two episodes out. So yeah, we won't be doing an episode next week. But we will be back uh, the week after, and we should be getting back on more of a consistent schedule. Um, but. 
anyway, with all that being said, we hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Leave your top five Flash episodes in the comment section down below. We'll see how they contrast and compare to our list. I mean, our list was fairly similar. Yeah. Um, you know, just kind of minus a few switched around. But yeah, make sure you leave your list in the comment section down below. And also, I kind of bring this up every now and then. But if you have any sort of fan questions, uh,